Episode 283, Brother vs. Brothers. The two leopards bit down on the armor's iron piece and started to tear at it, clearly wanting to remove it. A commotion broke out amongst the beastmen. What's going on? They seem to be fighting seriously now. Roger's mate isn't allowing him to hurt them, but the other three are unyielding. This battle is going to be hard to stop. Which side do you guys think will win? Roger is strong, but leopard beastmen don't have good stamina. If he continues to be surrounded like this, he'll definitely be the one to lose. This voice received the recognition of many beastmen, but they didn't show any contempt toward Roger. They continued to hold admiration for him. If this was a battlefield with his armor... Roger would still have the chance to win, even if he was up against three opponents of the same level. That might not be the case. Suddenly, a leopard beast man spoke up. Blair was close to the voice and also looked over. The leopard beast man instantly flushed when he saw Blair looking at him. He stuttered while trying to explain, All of us came from the city of beast men. We have a rule that when wooing a brother's mate, if we can defeat the brother, the defeated one would have to accept the victor's pursuit of their mate. So it's very likely that Roger will kill them. This leopard beast man looked toward the battlefield with a solemn expression and spoke in a strict tone. It can also be said that these three leopards will either die or win. The atmosphere amongst the beast men instantly became solemn. Blair's lips twitched. To think that there was such a strange custom. It was no wonder these three leopards suddenly seemed as if they had changed completely. Should she get Roger to stop holding back? After giving it some thought, Blair gave up. These three leopards were fighting with their lives. Any more words from her would take their lives. She could not just accept them. It didn't matter whether Roger won or lost. Roger knew this as well, so he might not kill his brothers. Taking a look at the three leopard cubs next to her, Blair thought with certainty. After all, they were brothers who had spent over ten years together. Blair stared at the battlefield nervously, hugging Catherine tightly. Even her breathing was lighter. On the battlefield, Roger swayed his body and once again threw the leopards off, causing more scratches to appear on his armor. The three leopards opposite him gathered together, panting heavily. Roger's stamina was depleted at a very high rate, and he was panting even more heavily than them. His exposed nose was covered in sweat and was glistening under the sun. Before he could regain his normal breathing, another leopard charged toward him. The three leopards worked together and incessantly tried to deplete Roger's stamina. Roger didn't fall for it. He turned and avoided him, then turned to attack the resting leopards. The leopard who was thrown off immediately turned to give chase. This time around, the three of them were forced to gather together. Roar! Roger let out a furious bellow and pounced toward one of them, his claws pressing down on a leopard in front of him. The leopard being pressed down fell and laid on the ground. At the same time, Roger bit toward a second leopard's back. The leopard chasing after Roger realized that things weren't going well and wanted to turn around. However, it was too late. If the three of them were defeated at the same time, it'd be a complete blowout. Roger swung his head and threw the leopard in his mouth toward the one behind him. His hostage also became his weapon, knocking down the third leopard. The crowd of beast men became eerily quiet. They weren't expecting this outcome. The three leopards didn't die, but they didn't win either. Roger emerged victorious. Roger stepped onto a leopard with each of his two front paws and grabbed onto one more with his mouth. He released the grip on his mouth and let out a deafening roar. Roar! Blair heaved a big sigh of relief and quickly ran over. Roger! Blair shouted and wiped off the sweat on his nose. Roger nudged against her waist intimately with his armor on. The joints of the armor were very sharp as well. 
If it wasn't because she was wearing snake skin, her skin would have been scratched. Blair shuddered when she saw the sharp glow and backed off a few pieces. Hey, be careful of the iron pieces you're wearing. Roger paused and thought of how he had specially sharpened the iron pieces so that he could better attack his enemies. He immediately looked toward her body anxiously. Seeing that Blair was unscathed, Roger eventually let out a heavy exhale. He was very fatigued and lay on the ground like a dead cat. Blair then looked at the other three leopards. They staggered back to their feet, covered in wounds. The one bitten by Roger on the back had his waist covered in blood. However, none of their lives were in danger. Given the male's physique, they'd recover in a few days. Are you guys all right? Blair asked. She felt a little angry at them, but seeing their injuries and thinking of how they put their lives on the line, she felt a little guilty. What Roger had done back then was right. Back then, it wasn't a life-or-death battle. One of the leopards changed into his human form and walked up to her. Blair's gaze landed on Catherine. The young two-striped beast man who bore a great resemblance to Roger took a long look at Blair, opened his mouth then spat out bloody saliva. <coughs> we'll abide by the rules and won't bother you anymore in the future. Hmm? Blair's eyes lit up, and she looked up in elation. It's great that you guys have thought things through. Roger, laying on the ground, relaxed as if a heavy burden had been taken off him. Seeing Blair's happy, smiling face, the young man let out a bitter laugh and said... It seems that we've troubled you. Blair laughed sheepishly and was about to say something to ease the awkwardness when the young man spoke up again. We're brothers and our feelings will affect each other. Roger loves you a lot and his feelings for you are too intense. That's why we lost control. Blair was struck by understanding. She took a look at Roger by her feet, feeling sweet inside. But you don't have to worry. Once we become mates with someone, this connection will break off, the young man said with a hint of blush on his face. There are many females in the village. We should be able to become mates with someone very quickly. That's good, Blair smiled and said. After you guys find your mates, we can hang out together as relatives. Hmm? The young man wore a baffled expression. The three leopards laying on the ground all looked up toward her, wearing the same confused expression. Blair was instantly struck by how adorable they looked. They were like how the little leopards were, as expected of blood-related brothers. It means that we can get together to eat when there are happy events. Okay, roar! The young man and the other two leopards replied in unison. Roger rested for a while. When he recovered his energy, he crawled up and glared at the young man warily. Howl! Quickly change back to your leopard form. The young man immediately bent over and changed back to his leopard form. The three leopards licked each other's wounds and backed off to the side. Roger nudged Blair out with his head, then ran to the center of the circle, letting out a howl that was filled with battle intent. There was no need for any translation. All the male beast men understood his challenge. A few three-striped beast men entered the battlefield. Another round of battles started. The remaining battle was easier to manage. The armored Roger could take on three opponents all by himself, even though all of them were three-striped beast men. Moreover, he won most of the battles. The males were going ahead at full steam. Although they were simply sparring with each other, that was still too bloody and gruesome for Blair. Besides, she was carrying a baby. Blair squeezed her way out of the spectator crowd, reeking of male sweat. Unable to tolerate the stink, she walked towards the waterhole. Splash, splash, splash. The sounds of splashing water and spinning wheels interspersed together. The water wheel continued spinning rhythmically like a music disc in play, forming circles of ripples on the glistening water surface. Blair set Catherine down on the soft, grassy plains, then crouched down by the waterhole to wash her face and hands. Now that the weather had turned warm, even Catherine was clad in a thin little snakeskin dress. 
The blazing sunlight made Catherine narrow her eyes. Twisting her body, she actually managed to flip over by herself. She then crawled towards her mommy. As she didn't have any experience, even as she reached the edge of the water hole, she continued crawling, plopping one hand into the water. With a flip of her little body, she was about to fall face down into the water when a fair, slender, and long hand grabbed her tiny hands, helping her steady herself. Ah, woo! As Catherine tilted her head sideways, a blue figure floating to the rippling water surface was reflected in her clear, silvery gray eyes. Blair, who was washing her face, had to halt in her actions when Caspian's head suddenly bubbled in front of her eyes. His hands were still propping up Catherine by the hands, with half of the latter's chest submerged in water. Catching a glimpse of Catherine from her peripheral vision, Blair was so startled that she let out a shriek. Oh gosh, Catherine! Blair hurriedly lifted her. Feeling lingering fears, she tightly held the baby to her chest. Following that, her eyes lit up with a delighted expression. Did Catherine crawl over here by herself? Blair turned her head to look, very much suspecting that someone had carried Catherine over. Seems like it, Caspian replied with a smile as he copied Catherine and tilted his head sideways. He reached out again to poke Catherine's rosy little cheeks. Blair slapped his hand away. You're not to poke her face. She's going to drool if you do that. Before she even finished speaking, a stream of transparent saliva seeped out from Catherine's mouth and landed on Caspian's hand. Blair quickly doused some water on his hand. Caspian casually shook his hands in the water and said, You said you would bring Catherine down to play. Well, you can come down now. Blair hesitated for a moment. With her entire body covered in perspiration, she felt sticky all over. Very quickly, she consented to it. Sure, wait a minute. Blair carried Catherine away. Caspian shifted half of his body onto the shore, and upon seeing that Blair was merely letting the baby pee, felt relieved. By the time she was done letting Catherine relieve herself, Caspian had finished blowing a bubble. He then brought Blair and her daughter into the water. Once they went in, the lighting became weaker. The refractions on the water surface made the bubble sparkle as though it was being illuminated by a trotting horse lamp. Widening her eyes, Catherine's gaze trailed after the light rays. Suddenly, she let out a shriek and started shortling. Blair, too, smiled as she lifted Catherine to the top of the bubble. Catherine stuck out her chubby little hands and vigorously slapped at the bright spots. Her excitement was apparent as she continuously squealed in her babyish voice. It was rare to see her reacting so vigorously, so Blair felt pretty glad. After playing for a while, Catherine lost interest in the light rays. With saliva hanging from her chin, she returned to her mommy's embrace. As Caspian continued diving downwards, he said, I think she will adore those little silverfish. I'll put her into a small individual bubble, 